So the switch is wired now. And um, just to recap, this black screw is the common screw that the, the switch will always be connected to. When you flick the switch, you'll either uh, put the contact to this screw or this screw. These two are called the toggles, and they will go on uh, the corresponding toggles on the other three-way switch. And the black screw, screw on the other three-way switch, switch will go to the light. So that's how three-way switches work. It doesn't matter which toggle you put on which, which side. You can reverse them, it doesn't matter, because it just alternates the power either way as you flick the switch. Now we're gonna install the actual switch into the wall. And how I'm gonna do that is the switch will normally come with screws like these, which I meant for a, either a plastic box or a metal box. It's a 6 30, 30 seconds thread on it. So I'm not gonna use this because I'm screwing right into wood here, this nice three inch plywood. And I'm gonna use in place of that, some uh, nice half inch um, low profile Phillips screws for wood. I'm gonna pre-drill them. So now with that one switch wide, we're now gonna connect the power um, from this light, which is the aux circuit I was talking about. We're just going to undo this wire nut, add this additional um, jumper off of it, twist it together. And what I like to do is put a little bit of solder on it so that we can ensure it will be, never, it'll never get disconnected electrically. So we're just gonna heat this tip up and we're gonna just give it a little solder to close that up. Like so. I'm gonna make sure you have a hot joint. You never want to uh, have the solder just melt on the iron and then to the wire. You always wanna have the, the wire melt the solder. That way you know it's going inside. Okay, now we're just gonna wire up the second switch. Now with the wires all run for the switches, I can go ahead and put this access panel back on. By the way, these, these cap screws here on trailers are a bit odd. They're not six, they're not a Torx fit. Uh, they're actually eight pointed uh, it looks like a Torx spline uh, type fit, but they're eight points. So what you do is you just use a number two square or a number one square because eight points to them. So uh, four square works good. Okay, with that wiring, we're just about done with lighting circuit. As you see, we have a power line here that goes to the ceiling. We have the two switches. We've got the power connected to that side of the switch. So um, the next step is to put the lights up. So I bought a five meter strip of these lights, LED lights. And um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put one strip on each, each other uh, of these beams up here. So, so we're gonna do, we have six beams, actually five, one, two, three, four, five. So we're gonna do lights on three of them. So I'm gonna cut this um, 15, sorry, this five meter uh, strip, which is 16.4 feet into three equal sections. 
which works out roughly to be, uh, five and a half feet per section. And then we're going to go ahead and attach uh, power leads to them, um, uh, a smaller gauge, like an 18 gauge, uh, to each strip because each strip is going to draw about two amps. So 18 gauge is enough. And the reason I'm doing that is because um, I, you have to be careful when you attach uh, co uh, conductors to these leads because it's a very uh, thin uh, tape on the back and um, they, they're delicate. So you don't want to connect a heavy wire. I'm going to use these wires here. I'm just going to clip, clip them off, clip these, uh, these couplings off here, uh, pin uh, sockets, and then just use them. So I, I need to actually attach one, one wire to, um, to uh, the middle section. So let's go ahead and do that. So to figure out how to cut the tape now, I'm going to basically uh, do some a few calculations now. So um, it's a five meter tape, which means 500 centimeters. I'm going to divide that by three pieces, uh, three pieces for the beams. Um, and then uh, that works out to be about um, 166.7 centimeters. Converting that into inches, that's about 65.6 inches of each piece, each of three pieces. And uh, I measured the roof beam. So the roof beam has about 69 inches of straight uh, straight roof beam to it before it curves uh, at the edges. That leaves about about three and a, three and a, three eighths uh, space uh, at each at, at one end. So you divide that by two, and you get about inch and three quarters space uh, in from each end of the beam, the straight edge of the beam. So that gives me not only the length of the each piece, but also the beam the uh, replacement. So we're going to go ahead and, and cut it out. Uh, I laid out the tape here, uh, my, my measuring tape, and I went ahead and marked out as close as I could uh, where to cut the tape. Um, and uh, so this this is, I end up with two pieces of 65 and one piece of 66. So that's pretty damn good because these uh, cut points, you can see them here, these copper cut points here. Uh, occur every couple inches, so you, you don't, you can't precisely cut this tape to get the right measurement. So uh, this is this is close. It's good enough. It's going to work. So with the spots marked, right at the cut lines, we're going to go ahead and cut it. Right, we see those copper conduct uh, conductors, the copper pads, and then and then you can see the cut the cut scissors uh, image on the spot. So we're just going to cut cut that one, and there's the other one. Go ahead and cut this one. It's basically just silicone paper and a small amount of copper. Okay, so now we have three pieces here. All right, like this. There's two. And they're roughly the same, within, within an inch of each other. You can see them here. So one's a little bit longer than the other. Uh, so that's fine. Good. All right, now the other thing I want to show you is that it comes standard with these eighth inch uh, power plugs, more, more like a quarter inch. And I, I, I just don't think it's worth using them. I'm just going to do a direct connection. I'm not going to go ahead and wire in a power plug on the opposite end. So I'm just going to cut this as well cut this off like that and then I for me I don't like stripping the outside of the um, of the casing because usually I cut through the insulator in one of them so what I do is I just kind of work a knife into uh, between the conductors I can see them now and try to stay between them at least to the point where I can pull apart the insulation so like that See, I did cut a little bit of that one, so, but that's okay. That's going to be a stripped area anyways. So I just pull them apart enough like that. Then I pull out the conductors. These conductors are only like 22 gauge uh, and on this wire, on this LED strip. So, and I'm just going to pull, pull back now just the insulation, the sheathing, until I have enough of the conductors exposed. Um, like that. Okay. And then I just cut off. I use a diagonal cutter 
I just cut off the... Uh... And this way I don't ever put a knife against the side of, of, the, of the sheeting and cutting into these very fine wires that have a very thin layer of insulation on them. Now what I do is I just strip, I strip back the wires. Like there's 22 gauge, you need this kind of small gauge stripper here. That's 22. Okay, so that, that's ready for hookup. What we're gonna do, we're gonna end up soldering these to a larger uh, diameter wire, wire, larger gauge wire. Um, because I, this is a good connection here. It's a little difficult to make. Now we're gonna have to make one on the, on the middle piece that you saw. So two of our pieces already have the ends, the conductors applied to them, attached. So, but the middle piece that we cut doesn't. So these two are all set to be spliced into the harness that we we're gonna make on the trailer. This strip here needs to uh, to be added. I need to add conductors for it, to it. Let's go ahead and do that. So now it's time to, to attach a lead to this one cut strip that has no leads. So what the way I, I've been doing it is I have this little vise I like to use with a piece of wood here to kind of support things. And what I do is I uh, take a knife. This is a very sharp knife. It makes sure it's a new knife. So there's no um, force you're really putting on it. And just cut off the silicone up to the, um, the copper tab. Get deep enough so that, you, that the copper tab is, is covered with the knife. Now, I keep the knife there because I'm going to do it now, a vertical cut, against that knife that's there. And that will prevent me from cutting into the tape, which I've done before. So it's kind of a protection that I like to use, is if I cut right along, I go a little bit deeper than what the copper tabs are at. And then what I do is I just cut down on top of the knife that's already in there. I remove that piece of silicone. And now you can see the, um, well, I didn't go in that, I need to go a little bit further down get that there we go do that again didn't go all the way now it's it's tricky you have to be careful you don't cut into the tape and this double knife approach kind of helps me do that now you see I can see the copper there clean off a little bit of silicone still okay and the other thing you want to be careful of is that there's a plus and minus if you reverse the polarity it's dc voltage so you have to be careful if you reverse the polarity they won't work so uh what i did was i went out and bought um this uh, two conductor wire that has the color coding and usually red is positive and um, black is negative. So um, this this is really marketed as a extension wire for LED tapes. So it's which is nice because you'll see how easy it is. If I was I've done this with larger gauge wire and it's difficult because the the gauge of the wire it leaves a big glob of uh, the larger the wire gauge the the bigger the glob of a uh, of uh, solder you're gonna put on there. So. You don't want that. You want a small wire to connect to it. 22 or 24 is good gauge. So let me turn on my soldering gun uh, and we're gonna start to solder this on here. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so uh, we're gonna start to solder it now. Um, before I solder it, I'm going to slip on a piece of uh, shrinkable tubing and make sure it's wide enough to go over the tape because the idea of this is to give it some support once it's soldered. Uh, and this is going to shrink to the to the size of this tape here. So I, I put that over the wire, the conductor. Okay, and I also put another piece here uh, that will go under it. Uh, it's smaller so that, it, that I have a, a pretty good uh, stiffness um, uh, where the connection's made. And you'll see how that kind of all shrinks up. So it kind of looks like that. The, uh, to do this, it's just a simple matter 
of tinning both of the uh, leads. So let's start with the tape conductors. I'll put a little bit of solder on those. Okay, I got a dab of solder each one of those. And this is rosin coarse solder I'm using for electrical work. Okay. So now with the leads tinned and the tape contacts tinned, now it's just a matter of making sure the polarity is right. So positive is... is red. Okay, and it's just going to be a matter of holding. I'm just touching this, letting the solder melt. Okay, now with the, the leads all connected and ready to be spliced into the harness, I'm just going to check them. I have a a 12 volt power supply up here. Just gonna make sure that the, everything works. So you just touch the, the lead, that one works. Uh, let's do this one. Good. And finally this one. Good. So we've checked out all of the, the uh, leads. They all uh, conduct and the LED strips are working. So now we can go ahead and put some extensions on uh, them, which are gonna be higher gauge. So these were 22, 24 gauge. Um, that's a little too small to run any significant length because the high voltage drop and, uh, and uh, it's not very uh, secure or stable, strong, I'm trying to say. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and now attach to those, these leads some 18 gauge uh, bell wire and this again is just going to be a lead it's maybe you know two feet maybe. so connecting these other leads with the 18 gauge similar process i just i, I prepare them to be soldered uh the tricks i use is um i put a couple you can't see them but i put a couple of shrink tubes behind this heat shield clamp here so with the, when i solder these i can slide the heat tubes up and shrink them over then i'm going to do another heat tube over the whole thing a shrink tube um, so the only thing, the only thing that makes it helpful is if you, uh, if you bend the, uh, the copper, this is, this is solid copper, uh, 18 gauge. So I, I bend it to put grooves in, into it so that the, the strand of wire has somewhere to hold on to. And now we're just going to go ahead and solder it like we have done before. so this was the factory attachment here this is a 22 gauge from the factory and i just upgraded it to an 18 gauge much stiffer uh lower voltage drop so and this is going to tie into the harness um, on the trailer i laid out the led tape pieces the three of them here along the ruler and I marked each one for the center, which works out to be about 32 and a half or 33 and a half, because one, like I said, is a little longer. It's actually two inches longer. So um, the center's gonna be a little bit off, but this is gonna guide me on where to put them on the rails. Correspondingly, I also put a mark, a center line on each one of the beams where I'm gonna be putting the tape. And so all I have to do is line up those marks now, and the tape will be evenly spaced on both sides of the beam. Before I apply the uh, LED tape to the other side of the beams, I'm going to clean them off with uh, some lacquer thin. Just make sure there's no grease or grime or dust on them and that I get a good adhesion with the 3M tape.
Now it's time to tie in the light tape sections into the power uh, and, and the neutral uh, uh, connection. So what I did, uh, I remember that wire that I, ca I came on the switch out of this switch with that runs along the top. I went ahead and cut it down the length. I just cut it all the way down. So it becomes almost like a feed wire the whole the whole way down. And how I'm gonna splice that in is, is I, I, I had trimmed the, this lead connector that you saw me solder down in my shop. And now I just exposed some of the, um, the conductor. I did a wrap here, an old school wrap, and I'm gonna solder that. So I got a 100% guaranteed connection. I'm not a crazy fan of the mechanical, you know, uh, crimp connections that you use in automotive. I've had some bad luck with those. So I'm just gonna go, go do this old school connection. And then on the other, other uh, the neutral wire, I'm just gonna uh, put this lug on, like you saw, I crimped the lug on it. And then I'm gonna just go ahead and screw it and tap that into this, uh, this metal roof framing, with aluminum roof framing, which is grounded. With that solder now, I'm just gonna slip the shrink, shrink wrap tubing over it up until this point, and then hit it with the heat gun. last section of, of LED tape light, I went ahead and did a, a, a through splice like this one, a dead end splice, um, and then I'm going to solder that up. And I already pre-placed the shrink tube wrapping here to slide over and shrink over the, the joint when done. So all the electrical connections are made to the tape, which is good. The last step is just to use some zip ties and, and tie down the cabling uh, to the existing cabling that was already up there. So just to keep things nice and neat, I'm gonna cut back these tails on these uh, zip ties and we're all set with the, with the lighting circuit.